Welcome back everyone to the second uh, video of this introduction series to Unreal Engine. As you can see, uh, we now have our first project right here that we saved, and we can see it now in the Epic Games Launcher. So every time you save something, a project, it will end up right here. So all you have to do to see it is double click it, and then it should open up quite quickly. Uh, depending on, again, how often you've opened it up or not, uh, this one goes quite fast. Uh, and then here we go. So we're in our um, uh, world. It could happen that your shaders might be compiling here at the bottom right. Don't worry if that happens. That's just part of it. Just be aware that it can happen. Right. So let's get uh, immediately to it. Um, so we're going to cover today navigation and importing assets, okay? And with navigation, I'm going to very, very quickly um, repeat what I said in the previous video. So navigating around the 3D viewport, uh, you can do that with your right mouse button. With your left mouse button, you can move around uh, and look around. Your middle mouse button allows you to pan uh, up, down, left, right. And if you wanted to uh, hold your uh, left, sorry, your right mouse button and move around with the W, S, A, D keys or Q also goes down and the letter E goes flying up. So if you want to go up and down like an elevator, that's the letter Q and the letter E. And then uh, for those of you that like uh, three applications like uh, Maya and Blender and such, um, you can just use the option key or the alt key on a PC, option key on a Mac. Uh, and then with your left mouse button, you can navigate just like in Maya, it's identical. Uh, and the same with your right mouse button, button is to um, zoom in and out. And your middle mouse button um, is to pan up, left, right, down, and so forth. Again, you can highlight an item and press F that will focus on it. So remember just the F of focus. And to deselect uh, a object, it's escape. There you go. So very quick uh, recap, and let's move on to uh, the rest of the navigation. We're gonna talk primarily about these little things right here. Okay, so we have a few of these ones here. So here you can see, for example, um, you can check your FPS, so your frames per second to see how fast your thingy is running. So mine seems to be running at around 80 frames per second at the moment. Um, not really useful unless you are going to create video games, uh, which have to be in real time. But then again, also, if you're making cinematics, it's true that it can be useful uh, if you're going to capture the screen, uh, which you can screen, you know, like if you're going to do a screen capture or something. Uh, you want to make sure that your FPS is above uh, a certain uh, rate. Um, but we'll talk about all that at a later point in time. Then uh, other things uh, we can check is the field of view, quite useful. Okay, so that basically is how zoomed in or zoomed out. Right? How much of a wide lens do you want? Standard is 90 uh, in this application, but you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, another thing that is quite useful, you'll find it right here, is game view. If you press on it, Right, all these little icons, the light and stuff, they're gone. Right, if you want them back, there's the letter G, and they come right back. It's quite useful if you're gonna take screenshots. I'll show you that in a second. And then you've got immersive mode, quite useful. On a Mac, it's Command plus F11. So on a computer or PC, it's um, Control plus F11. Immersive mode, basically it's uh, this. You basically put your 3D viewport uh, as your entire screen quite useful when you want to do like detailed work and you want to look at it uh, from a bigger perspective basically right so you can also undo that and you come right back in here right uh, and then other things that could be useful here uh, are let's have a look bookmarks can be useful a bookmark is basically okay if I jump to bookmark one it's basically where a camera has been or a shot that you like has been saved. Right? You can save your shots. So this is bookmark one, uh, bookmark two would be this one. These are come preset already. But if you want to create your own bookmark, very simple. Okay, so you just go. Also notice how 
by the way, the uh, field of view, oh no, I did think that the field of view looked different, but no, never mind. <clears throat> that was me just thinking it. Um, escape. And if I wanted to, for example, okay, say for example, I like this particular shot. Oops, goes a bit too fast. Say this would be an important bookmark for me. I just go here and I can set bookmark to say bookmark zero, for example, right? And so now if I move around and I said, oh, what was that shot again? Uh, oh, bookmark, jump to bookmark zero. And then it goes back. Um, you can do this with a lot of different things. It's useful if you're like modeling or uh, if you have particular shots that are important to keep. That's quite useful. Bookmarks, uh, they're quite useful. This one I really like and I use it quite a lot. Uh, create camera here. So say for example, um, well, let's go back to that bookmark that we had in the first place, right? Bookmark zero. And say, hmm, actually I would like to set a camera here. So you can go to create a camera here, and then it should provide you with a camera actor or a cine camera actor. I always use cine camera actor because it provides much more um, much more information. So I'll quickly show you. So this is a camera cine camera actor now, and if I wanted to have a look at this, I could go through placed camera. So I go to perspective, and then I click on cine camera actor. This is my shot. This is my camera, my actor here, right here. And I can change all these settings here. We're not going to check that yet, but just know that uh, this is the camera that I'm looking through. And here I am allowed to pilot the camera. So if I move the camera around, right, and I were to say eject, so get out of the camera, right, and I pilot around again, uh, let me quickly click on. For example, her. see, this is the camera that is in the engine, right? And when I click on it, if I move here, and if I move this around, for example, then it will move the camera. But it is also interesting that when you go into your camera, you can pilot around as long as this one is highlighted, okay? This has to be highlighted. You took a little off. Now make some changes now, right? Say for here, for example, and I go back into my, no, I take this off. I mean, I eject and I go back here, normally, if I were to go back into, okay, for some reason it seems to be working now, but normally when I work, especially when I'm setting keyframes, when I'm setting keyframes, I always have um, this one on. So it says toggle showing the exact camera view when using the viewport to pilot a camera. Uh, just to be safe, I always put it on. But you know, have a look for yourself, see how it works for you, and um, yeah, see, it, it, oops, pressed the wrong button here. By the way, uh, that's another thing that I forgot to tell you, but these ones, bookmarks, you can just press the, like, the numbers on your uh, keyboard. So, bookmark zero would be zero, bookmark one. Uh, it's quite useful as a shortcut. So, if I press number two, number one, number zero, see, very useful. Um, okay, so that's this part of navigation, and we're not going to go too much into that, or because otherwise this video would take forever, <laughs> but um, just know that these things are here, bookmarks and cameras, very useful, and we'll discuss cameras in further detail at a later point in time where we'll look at all these things and what we can do with these things. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Right, I'm going to delete the camera basically. All right, and uh, to delete an item uh, is basically your delete key. Uh, delete key, or on a Mac you can uh, press the backspace button. Right. Um, let's see. So with that said and done, we can move over to here. So here you've got different views. So you've got your perspective view, which is the one we're in now, but you can also go to top view. Right. So in the top view to navigate, it's your right mouse button, and um, you can zoom in with your scroll wheel. Uh, you can measure with your um, middle mouse button, which is what I'm doing now. So if I want to see how much, how many units that is, that's 480 units, for example. That's with your middle mouse button, and your uh, left mouse button. That basically allows you to select uh, multiple items, or at least that's the way I understand it. Um, yes, <laughs> there we go. And escape uh, allows you to um, get away from it. If you want to select a particular item, say this character, whoops, uh, or let's, you know, where's the young lady? Not a young lady somewhere here. There we go. If you want to select her, you press F, it's identically the same thing. 
Okay, so the same um, system applies. So you've got the bottom view as well. You've got the left and right. Uh, here again, you can see all your characters here in wireframe mode. Uh, you've got your right, your front, your back, and so forth. Um, the thing that I've mentioned is that this wireframe, because your orthographic views tend to be in wireframe, but nothing is stopping you from lighting it up, okay, or <laughs> put it lit. The thing is that your walls will be will be in the way, so it makes sense to keep it in wireframe mode. Let's go back to perspective, and here it does make sense to use these because here, for example, this is lit, meaning that you can see all your shadows and your lighting. But sometimes, if you're in a air, like an environment that doesn't have much light, it makes sense to do it unlit, right? To see just directly, just your shapes, and it's very nice. Uh, it's easy to model and, I mean, not model, but easy to place your, your items. Well, actually, also modeling, uh, because you can do some basic modeling in Unreal Engine, but that's also for later. There's so much to cover. Like, the more I go through this tutorial, the more I realize that, oh my god, there's so much to talk about. <laughs> Anyways, you've got your, um, your wireframes uh, that you can see. Uh, and different things like reflections, if you wanted to see your reflections uh, based on your reflection capture and so forth. Uh, there's a lot. So this all happens here. And then we've got your show, where you can see your different type of things, uh, your post-processing, your static meshes, and all that stuff. That's all here. You can uh, toggle them on and off. Right, then we get to the next part, which is the moving of items. So let's say we want to move her. Okay, well here at the bottom we get this cool little icon or widget and very simple you have your like in the 3d application program uh, blue red and green these are your axes so if you want to move around on the x-axis that is your red your green axis is the y and your blue axis is a z uh, and you can basically that's with the left mouse button by the way so all these movements. You will also notice that uh, the character is moving incrementally, meaning that is moving in a particular, like, kind of like chopped up. There's a very simple reason for that. That's because in Unreal Engine, it's extremely useful to work with um, units or um, snapping. Okay, so grid snapping, which is here, and we'll look into that in a second. So. Everything that you do here will snap 10 units right here. So you can change it to 100 units. And if I were to move now, see, it will move 100 units to left or right, uh, and so forth, and so forth, right? Or 50 units, uh, and then you'll see a smaller, but it's useful. You can also turn off snapping by just clicking this. And then it won't snap to anything. And then you can just move freely and place the character freely. To undo, as usual, it's Control Z or Command Z on a Mac. Right, I'm going to turn snapping back on. And so that's for moving around. Now, if you want to rotate things, you click on this one and you can rotate. Now, you will notice that your character also keeps on snapping and it snaps every 10 degrees. You can change that as well. Say, for example, you want it to snap 90 degrees. Right, no problem. You just see now it's just 90 degrees, 90 degrees, uh, or no snapping at all. Same principle, it just keeps on working. Okay, there you go, and then you're free to move the character as you wish. Same here in all axes, um, it works really well. Right, I'm going to turn snapping on again, put it back to 10. And this last one, okay, this one is scaling, so you can scale in many directions. Um, you know. If you want to scale upwards, for example, or you want to scale on the y-axis, uh, it doesn't make sense to do this, <laughs> not for characters at least. You can turn characters gigantic. Also, if you were to be curious as to, okay, where does it scale from? Well, it will always scale from your pivot point. Okay, your pivot point is this thing right here in the middle. Okay, every item has a pivot point, every 3D object. So this box has a pivot point, and the pivot point of this box is right here in the center of it. All right? So if I were to scale, it will scale outward from that point. It is the same in all 3D applications. All right? So now we have a giant lady. And um, again, like I said, we can undo everything by just Control-Z or Command-Z. 
Right, but that's scaling, and it's also happening in increments or by snapping. If you remove this, then I can scale till my heart is content. Um, but snapping allows you to just do precision work, which is quite interesting. Right, then we have another thing right here, camera speed. Camera speed is quite useful. So when I move around, right, let's say I'm, I navigate around my, my um, environment, it navigates at the camera speed of three. But if I were to, let's say if I wanted to do something very, very precise, I put my camera speed at one, and then see when I move around now, I'm moving very slowly, very useful. If you are close to a particular shot and you want it to be very specific, very precise, it's very important to do it like this, right? And the same if you put your speed at seven, for example, and I just press this once, look, it, it flies out. It just goes really far out. So if you want to navigate yourself again and you don't know where you are, like I said, or let's say you were here and you can't find your environment anymore, don't panic, just click on anything on the outliner, press the letter F, and you're back in business. Don't forget to put your camera speed to something comfortable again. So here now it's at camera speed number four. The standard is three, and it works really well. Um, right, oops, there we go. Okay, and then we have this, which is basically where you can see your uh, different uh, viewports at the same time. Again, if you're doing something very specific here uh, that you can modify or you want to see what the reaction is on this screen, it's quite useful sometimes when animating or when you're doing precision work. It's very useful to um, move these things around here. So if I were to uh, move this character, say here, and because it says not real time, because it says real time off, you won't see it directly. So you have to if I were to turn it on, okay, so normally as I move this, see, you can see it here as well. Okay, there we go. So let's go back to here. If I wanted to go, for example, here, then it will just focus on this. Uh, this is similar to in Maya, right, with your space key. If you press the space bar, uh, it does that basically. Uh, so for Maya users, that's basically what that, do that does. Um, now, shortcut keys. We all love shortcut keys. I love them too. Uh, this one is W. Okay, this one is E, and this one is R. Okay, again, my users, you're going to be very happy because it's pretty much the same thing. So W for moving, uh, E for rotating, and R for scaling. Okay, so we've seen the navigation side of things now, or at least the most important things. Uh, another thing that would be very important to learn is how to... Uh, move your pivot point, right? Your pivot point is something that we tend to move around quite a lot. Let me move this also to 10. Let's say I wanted to change the pivot point on this character, right? Because we have snapping to a lot of things and when we're placing items, we want to be able to move them. Okay, so if we want to move around with the pivot point um, or we want to modify the pivot point, what you have to do is press the Alt and middle mouse button. And this will allow you to move the pivot point to wherever you want. Now, very important is to, if I were to move around now and select something else, and I come back to this character, guess what? The pivot point is back at the same place. That's because you have to tell Unreal that my right mouse button, you say, or is it here, uh, pivot, there we go, set as pivot offset. Okay, it's very important. So. Only then will it remember, if I were to click on this and I come back now, then you have a different pivot point. Why is this important to move your pivot point? Well, 3D artists will know this, or people that have experience in it, but now, see, you will rotate around this point. Right, so that's just something that's quite interesting to know uh, with pivot points. You can also snap pivot points, but that we'll see a little bit later uh, when we go into a bit more detailed uh, work. But it's perfectly possible snapping pivot points because I can already hear or well here I'm I can imagine that some of you guys are already wondering that uh, it's like how do I snap pivot points to other uh, points for example um, there we go so that's how you move a pivot point so it's alt or option key on a Mac and middle mouse button and then you can move it around uh, if you as you've noticed there was snapping so if you didn't want snapping you just remove the snapping 
Again, Alt, middle mouse button, and now you are free to move your pivot point as to where you want without any snapping uh, involved. Okay, so with that set, that's the pivot point thing, which I think is important as well. Uh, and then I think we've covered pretty much, I think, the basics. There's so much more to talk about, but I think we've got the basics covered here. Okay, then let's start talking about importing items. Okay, so you have a scene here and you've got all kinds of stuff, right? So um, we already know that we can import items just from our content browser like we did previously. So for example, if I were to go to mannequin and I go to character and I go to mesh and here was the, I mean, we have the female one that we imported, but we can also just import another male right next to it, right? And that's how we can import things. Uh, but let's say we wanted to import something like a static mesh. If I were to click on static mesh, I'm not gonna see anything here because it's going to search in this folder, right? So I have to go to content and then it's gonna show me all the static meshes in my project, right? So at the beginning with the starter content, you're not gonna have that many, that's fine. Um, another thing that I haven't talked about yet here is if you, here you've got view options at the bottom. And you can choose to view things as tiles, as lists, as whatever you will, right? Columns. Uh, I still use tiles, but what I do tend to do is here in scale, I tend to make them a little bit smaller so I can have a better view. So you can show a lot of things. There's a lot of options. Have a look at which uh, setup works best for you. So, okay. So if you wanted to um, import items, okay, so very simple. You can use a cylinder and you just bring it in. And it comes out like this first, okay, like a traditional UV map. Uh, that's normal. It needs to uh, upload the shaders. That only happens the first time. Second time you do it, uh, it will pop up immediate, okay? Um, another thing that I keep forgetting also to mention because there's all so many things, but if we wanted to copy this, yeah, you can keep importing a million of these like this, and then you could say, okay, well, or let's command Z or control Z. Let's say I wanted to copy. If I go and stand on any of these arrows, Right, and I just hold in the Alt key or Option key on the Mac. I just hold that in and I move it, and there we go. Just made myself a copy, right? So very easy if you wanted to copy a whole bunch of these things very quickly. Oh, there we go, now we got four of them, just by holding the Alt key or Option key on a Mac, right? Deleting, again, that's just quickly deleting, um, and so forth. So that's how you import and copy uh, here within the viewport, or at least the easiest way. There are other ways, but that's the easiest way. Oh yeah, maybe another thing that's important to mention. There are differences between this cube. Okay, so if I were to import this, and again, 3D artists might know this already from working with 3D applications, but if I were to scale this, okay, when I go here, and I, you'll see I don't have information on UVs. If I do, then I have to go somewhere else. But if I were to, let's quickly add a material to this, right? Let's click on material. Let's undo static mesh so I can only focus on materials. And if I wanted this cube to have a material, I could drag and drop the material straight into it. All right, let's see. Let's wait for a second. There we go, it's in, All right? Let me also have a quick look. Let me F. And then for some things like this, for example, it's perfect to use the Alt key and your left mouse button so that you can navigate around it. Uh, it's much easier. Yeah? So sometimes I use the, the um, WASD keys uh, and sometimes I use this uh, system. But anyways, uh, what's important here is look what happens when I start uh, scaling it, right? If I start scaling it, my textures start stretching and it looks horrible, right? So this is why you don't want to scale like this, okay? Um, you can do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. If you scale on all three, then it's not a problem, okay? You're just gonna scale and just make your thing bigger. Uh, but if you were to scale, well, unless you were to scale really, really high, and if you have a low quality texture, then you're gonna get um, other issues. But, you know, you can scale quite, I mean, these, these textures tend to be quite good. Um, so you can scale up quite well. Now, but what I don't recommend doing is stretching out your textures. You can do that with another type of box, which we'll see at a later point in time. Um, 
but that is something that might be useful to remember. So let's have a look. So we've seen how we can um, add materials and import them. Super easy. Okay, you just find one that you like and you want it to attach it to the uh, staircase here, for example. And there you go. It's that easy. It's really that easy. Uh, and if you want to, there's another way. If you go, if, when you click on your item, on your uh, mesh, and you want to change the material here, here in your details menu, okay, I'll, open, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Uh, if you scroll down a bit, you have this tab called materials, okay, so you've got transform, static mesh, and materials. Very simple, you want another material, you just drag and drop it down there. You have to wait a little bit to uh, let it load up, it doesn't take that long, and there you go. The more complex the material, obviously, the longer it takes to load up. Um, you can also just change it right here. If you click here, guess what? You get a menu of all your materials, right? You want it maybe something with metal, uh, then you just click on it there. So it's very easy. It's on the fly, okay? Obviously, some of them work better than others. This clearly is not made for a staircase, um, but this is where you can get your materials done. At the same way, if you have this particular item, and now it's a static mesh, it's a stairs, right? But I could turn this into a ball if I wanted to, no problem. I just did that right here. So you have uh, other static meshes like the cube or um, the pillar. See, it will always start off from where your pivot point is. Very important. Again, that your origin point, your pivot point is very important. You always have to remember that. Um, so that's why the stairs works like that because the pivot point of the stairs is in the corner, right? If you pay attention, it's actually under the ground. Um, right, so that's how to import and export, I mean import and export, just place items into your scene. We haven't really looked at importing and exporting properly yet. Exporting we're not gonna cover now, uh, but importing, yeah, maybe that could be interesting. Uh, so, so let's talk about importing assets that uh, are your own, for example. You created your own asset and you have some 3D model. Um, so let's quickly move this to the side a bit. I've got one behind here. Uh, it's not made by me. Um, but if, for example, I wanted to import uh, a bicycle, so this is a bike, uh, a 3D bike, uh, you can create, for example, for yourself, um, right mouse click and create yourself a new folder and give that folder a name, um, my assets, for example, and turn on static mesh. You can import just simple as that. You drag and drop. Okay, it's going to ask you how you want to import it. I do tend to convert scene unit just to make sure that all the units are the same. Then I import. And there we go. It comes out as bike pieces because this FBX was created as um, individual pieces. But nonetheless, it can still be used. Okay, so if you were, for example, if you needed this particular part of the bicycle, or oh, oh, looks like it just takes everything in one go. Perfect. <laughs> um, again, it's not my item, um, so it's I'm kind of winging it. But there you go. If you needed a, a um, item to import or your own, here you go. That's that's literally how easy it is. And if it's just down to quickly having to uh, use it for some placement or whatever it is that you need, well, there you go. It's it's a done deal. Um, I do not remember where I got it from. Um, one of these turbo squid type of uh, objects, I believe. So sorry for not crediting the person that made this. Um, but that's how easy it literally is, okay, to get your bicycle uh, or your items imported, okay? Um, but it's important to maybe create a bit of a folder structure. So that's very easy to do. Uh, you can also do that through here, new folder, um, or just right-clicking. Uh, or if you wanted to create a folder within a folder, again, you can just right-click here uh, and so forth. Um, so... That also just showed me actually only the static mesh, by the way, but you also had some materials that were attached to it um, for the bicycle uh, already. So that's how easy it is to import uh, your own FBX um, items. If I were to click on the bicycle, again, it will show you the individual uh, pieces. So it seems that in this case, when you imported it, you get the bike object 
uh, as separate objects, right? If you want to delete them, say for example, okay, I do not want this whole bicycle thing here, you can shift select all of it and then right mouse button somewhere here it says see because you can't at least on a Mac you cannot just delete just like that um, oh, function delete there we go and then the bicycle is gone okay so you can do that too if you wanted to delete a lot of items in one go um, at least I haven't managed to do it like that but who knows right uh, anyway so that's how you import and export really quickly right uh, content then more importantly um, what about all that content that um, Epic Games makes right because they make it very easy for us to use a lot of content for free so where do you get that well the answer to that is the marketplace right and for that I'm just going to get the marketplace right here and let's see right here right so here's a very good tip and this is why you want to come back here all the time okay every month you get let me open this up let me open this up as wide as I can it's easier for you guys to see every month you get here free items every month okay so for example you get really interesting animation packs you get this whole uh, industrial area hanger all this stuff all you got to do, as you've seen, I've owned it. I've I already owned it because every month I come and collect. But uh, it's when you add up all the money, it's easily worth over $150 for free every month. So every month there's about anywhere between five and ten items. Um, as you've noticed, you also have view all free products, right? And then you go to all the products that are free, right? So and here again, there are so many items that you might be interested in having. I strongly recommend you to have a look, for example, at the MetaHumans uh, demo. It's very interesting. Look it up on on um, on YouTube. It's definitely worth it. But you've got all these things here, right? The, the City of Brass, for example, from um, what's what was the name of the game again? Uh, environments from oh no, I thought it was from a specific game. But for example, here, this is actually a very good example, right? So all this. You can have for free all these items all these assets here you go this okay you can get them all for free and the way to do it is very simple all you have to do is just click on free and that's it you have to see which one is supported though <laughs> that, that's an interesting one uh, here it's only supported for windows and not for mac so on this computer i won't be able to see it um on a pc i will uh, or at least i will be able to import it it's in my library now but I won't be able to um, import. And you see now it's owned. So, and like that, you can just keep on going until you've got everything that you need. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, from here. Um, you've got your free collection somewhere here, you know, free. You've got Epic Games content. All of this is for free, all of it. Every little thing you can just add to your cart and import as you go. And see, uh, you see I already have uh, a whole bunch of them. I don't have everything. Um, and so forth. They often have very interesting sales, like now. Uh, they have an interesting February sale. Also, always worth looking at. It's a lot of good stuff, 50% off uh, if you were to um, need particular items. But this is basically where you get your items. And it's very easy to import it once it's in your library, right? So once you've got one of these, it goes here. And what you can do then is, let's say, for example, because I got a lot of them. Wait, I'm going to do. Uh, what was this called? Starter. Yeah, animation starter pack, right? So it will give me additional animations. So let's say I wanted to add this to my project. It's very simple. I just click on it and it will tell you, okay, what project do you want to import it into? So in this case, my first project, and you just press add to project. You will see that it will download. In my case, it went very fast. 25 megabytes goes fast. Uh, and then now when I come back here, I will have the animation starter pack added and now I can add animations and all that type of stuff that's how you get uh, new content into your system okay and it could be anything now you have to be very careful not to go crazy on content because this was very small okay I, I took that one for a reason um, because I knew it was gonna download fast but there are others 
which are much more, you know, much bigger. Okay. Um, some of them, I don't know, I'm just going to click on a new random one. Um, these ones, they tend to take a little bit longer. Always check at your supported platforms and check your supported engine version. Very important because this is only supported up to engine version 4.25. Don't forget, we are working in 4.26 right now. Or at least that's the version that I've got. You can go ahead and download the other version if you wanted to. Uh, just go to your library, go back up, and here if you press plus, you can download any version of the Unreal Engine that you need. So it's very, very useful. You can always have multiple versions of it uh, up and running. Just don't forget, it's very, <laughs> it's very taxing on your hard drive. Okay, so there you go. Um, that is the basics of importing uh, items, placing items into your um, into your viewport. Um, like I said, all these things you've got your snapping. Um, like, put it again. You got your snapping, uh, so that things snap. You know how to copy. Um, this I will explain in the next video when we start covering lighting. This, for example, why all of a sudden you've got this. Uh, don't panic if you see that. That has everything to do with, I mean, if you really wanted to solve it very fast, all you got to do right now, just for now, so that you know, just build your lighting only. If I were to click this right now, it's quickly going to recalculate my lights. See at the bottom and it's done. It's uh, building lighting. There you go. You can see it here and it will recalculate. And there you go. The lighting has been recalculated and then you've got new shadows. Um, but that's for another video because that is part of lighting and then we have to explain these items, um, I mean the, the, the part of lighting, how it works. But in case you were curious, uh, that's how you can fix that. Okay, well that's it for this video. In the next video, we are going to cover uh, some basic building, uh, you know, maybe start with actually building some stuff and looking at some lighting.